coding made easy. So what's up everybody, this is Peter aka Coding Made Easy coming to you with your third C Sharp tutorial and in this tutorial we are going to be learning about variables. Now before I get started, in the last tutorial you probably noticed that after my right line and read line statements I ended it with a semicolon. Well in C Sharp and other languages like it uh, that are part of the C family like C, C++, um, even Java, even though it's not technically a part of, it's like a superset of C++. Um, but all of these end their statements uh, with semicolons, and this just uh, tells the uh, compiler uh, that, or tells the, yeah, tells the compiler that this is the end of a statement. Um, so yeah. So you're gonna be, you have to get used to using the semicolon at the end of statements because you will be using it a lot. Uh, so yeah. Uh, in this, so in this tutorial, we're gonna be learning about variables and what are variables? Well, I'm pretty sure in math class, you've had probably a problem like this. They will say, uh, what is X plus Y? And it will say, let X be three and let y be 5. What's x plus 5? And that is 8. Um, or sorry, what's 3 plus 5? <laughs> well, I guess the same thing. So basically, what variables allow you to do is encapsulate values. So it allows you to hold values, store them under a specific name, and reuse them within your program. So uh, one example I like to use is, let's say we have the... Uh, Let's say we're making a game, making a video game, and we write line, and we say Peter's health, and we say uh, is equal to uh, 100. And then after a monster attacks Peter, and it says Peter takes 20 damage. And then, so then we'll write Peter health, Peter's health equals 80. Right, so that looks good. Okay, so now what if I change the initial health to 50 and I take 20 damage? My health is no longer 80 anymore. And so every single time we change health, we'll have to recalculate, uh, redisplay this health. And so this would be 30. And so this is not the way to do things, right? We want to be able to store the values and we want the calculations to be done for us. And this is the power of variables. So there are different variables. There's many different variable uh, types within, within C Sharp, uh, but we're just going to be discovering a, a select few now and then we will discover uh, a few more in the future. Uh, so I just want to get you used to the convention of how variables work. So the way variables work within C Sharp is that we have to put the type of the variable and then we have to put the name. Uh, so there's different types of variables. The type we're going to be looking at now is an int. So int means int or integer, sorry. So an integer is any whole number. So one, two, three, four, negative one, negative two, negative 100. That is an integer. So now we can name the variable whatever we want, but there are rules to naming the variables. Now, um, the rule is that a variable name cannot start with a number, right? So if you try to do that, you'll get a bunch of red squigglies. So a variable name must start with an underscore or start with a letter, right? So some people like to name theirs underscore whatever the name of the variable is. And some like to just whatever, name it, whatever. Now, um, after you've used, say, an underscore or a letter, then you can put numbers after, right? So I could say uh, this is a variable one if I wanted to. Right, so you, you can do that. You have other options. You have the option to do that as well. Uh, but the most common that you'll see within C-sharp 
is you'll see them starting with an underscore and whatever the name of the variable is or maybe you'll see something like that um sorry something like uh what's known as camel case so the first word would be lowercase uh, it's called lower camel case sorry so you'll see like peter and then the next word or every word after that will be an uppercase so that's a common convention you'll see in c sharp as well so for right now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to store it as peter's health and usually a variable name you can name it whatever you want but you usually want to name it what it represents makes sense so right now i'm going to use the assignment operator and i'm going to say it's equal to 100. so i just place the value 100 into this variable name peter's health now look at how cool this is so we can say console right line and we can put peter's health right there and if we run this program as you can see it displays the value that is inside this variable right there so if i wanted to what i can do is i can do this peter's health is and the cool thing about console right line is you can use a plus sign to add to concatenate different things together so i could write stuff after or blah 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 but for now we're just going to say your health is and it's going to display the health inside uh, uh peter's health so then we're going to write again we're going to say uh peter takes um the 20 damage and so outside here what we're going to do now is we're going to say peter's health is equal to peter's health minus 20. so what did i just do i basically said okay take i want to reassign the value of peter's health so we're going to say it's equal to peter's health so this is going to be replaced by the value so what is peter's health currently it's currently 100 so what is 100 minus 20 that is 80 so peter's health is going to be equal to 80 and so we're going to copy this right here to display the health again and voila we're going to get the result we want so peter's health is 100 peter takes 20 damage peter's health is 80. so therefore it did the calculation for us and so no matter what we do, then uh, we can, it will handle it for us. So we can even take this a step further because say we make this 40, right? This is gonna be wrong. But one thing we could do is we can make another variable. So let's make another variable called damage. And right now we're gonna set the damage to 20. So, and notice we have to end it with a semicolon. Keep note that we need to end it with a semicolon or you will have problems. If you remove the semicolon, uh, then it doesn't know where, when the statement ended. So instead of putting a hard coded value in there, you can end the quotes and put a plus sign. And let's put damage. Let's put the plus sign and write some text after. So, damage. Sorry about that, so we're gonna put damage here. So what is this gonna say? It's gonna say Peter's health is Peter's health. So it's gonna get the value inside that which is 100. It's gonna say Peter takes plus damage. What is damage? What's the value? The value stored inside damage is 20. So it's gonna say Peter takes 20 damage. Then it's gonna say Peter's health is equal to Peter's health minus damage. So then in the once it actually gets down to the code, it's going to say what's the value of peter's health and it's going to say peter's the value of peter's health is 100 what is damage uh, damage is equal to 20 so 100 minus 20 that's at the peter's health and i'm going to display peter's health right there so let's do it and as you can see we get the value right here and so we can change the amount of damage the the monster does whatever and we can see the result here so it does it for us so we don't have to continue continuously alter our text so anyways uh that is it for this tutorial so i hope you enjoyed it in the next tutorial we will we will explore a bit more about variables and 
hope you will enjoy it. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe, and bye for now.